And a very good evening to you. I'm Sophia Cambridge with this Palm Sunday, March 25th edition of the CBC Evening News in our top story tonight. As the end of this year's Lenten season draws nearer, Barbadians are being reminded of the need for change. It followed a march in St. John commemorating Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is still the source of much excitement and celebration for most God-fearing Barbadians, and it was on full display in the parish of St. John. From 8 in the morning, scores of worshippers with palms in hand descended on the Gall Hill playing field. They were preparing to reenact the Bible story of the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem when palm branches were placed in his path before his arrest on Holy Thursday and his crucifixion on Good Friday. Marching to the beat of the Barbados Regiment Band, they moved through the surrounding community and into the church. On the inside, Canon Dr. Jeffrey Mears in his sermon encouraged the congregation to use Palm Sunday as the foundation for a new beginning. Our behavior will be shaped not just by the laws that are imposed upon us, but by a complete transformation of who we are. A new heart, a new spirit I will put in you. The old heart and the old spirit I will take away from you and you will become a new people. To achieve this, he says sacrifices need to be made. We are encouraged then to destroy those things that prevent us from seeing what our true focus ought to be. The celebration marks the beginning of Holy Week, the final week of Lent. Kareem Smith, CBC News. Thank you so much, Kareem. A solar farm in Trent, St. Lucie, is saving customers millions of dollars on their electricity bills every year. Managing Director of the Barbados Light and Power Company, Roger Blackman, says the 10-megawatt farm is performing very well and is delivering fuel savings for the company, which are then passed on to customers. When that is at full output, what it means is that we don't have to run another generator that's, running, you know, that's burning fuel. And so when that's at 10 megawatts, that's 10 megawatts worth of fuel that we're saving from another plant. And so I think the, the estimates um, that, that I get would be around between 8 and $10 million a year. It varies depending on what fuel prices are, um, but it's probably around $10 million a year at today's fuel prices that, that that plant is producing. And of course, that's a straight pass through to customers, so that will be reflected in the, uh, a slight drop in the fuel charge as a result. Well, Mr. Blackman says that the Barbados Light and Power Company is looking at constructing another solar farm at Lower Estate in St. George and is also still hoping to establish a wind farm. As Barbados moves to more renewable energy sources, Mr. Blackman says he is somewhat disappointed that biomass and waste to energy programs are not on the network at this stage. Those are firm renewable energy options uh, that will allow us to get to our 100-100 vision, which is 100% renewables. In order to do that, in addition to solar and wind, you need firm renewables. Uh, you need renewables that are on 24 hours a day. And renewables like waste the energy and biomass allow us to achieve that. Uh, or, uh, initially, we had the, the expectation is that around sometime this year, um, things like biomass and waste energy would have been realized and on the network. But as, as you all know, those, those projects have been delayed. In other news, the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation says the film sector in our island is growing and it's telling Barbadians they should be proud of the content produced here. Business Development Officer Export, Alan Lang, says the BIDC is partnering with the Barbados Cultural Industries Development Authority as efforts continue to further develop the cultural industries and the film sector. We need to really build it out and really need to grow that. So we need to really create opportunities for individuals to, to build their skills um, and opportunities for, for people to have a career in that, in that industry. And that's really what we're doing and that's part of our initiative. Um, the BIDC places a high emphasis on 
I'm supporting the cultural industries and, and, and building out those sectors. So um, you can expect to see more initiatives um, within the, the um, culture industries from the um, BIDC as well. Well, Mr. Lang was speaking on the sidelines of a screenwriter's workshop organized by the Barbados Cultural Industries Development Authority. Over 20 participants took part in the first of three workshops and Film Commissioner Annette Nias says it's part of efforts to improve the skills of Barbadians who are interested in film. The common feature is that they're interested in improving film writing skills. The workshop is being conducted by Romel Hall, a well-known Barbadian producer, director, writer. The next two workshops will be held in April. Um, the, f the second one will be audio production. This will be presented by Cedric Smart, Trinidadian. And the third workshop will focus on lighting for film and video. Well, news from the Royal Barbados Police Force now in a two-vehicle smash-up along the ABC Highway has left four people seriously injured. The head-on collision, which occurred around 3 o'clock this afternoon, happened just east of the villages at Coverley, injuring both drivers and their respective front seat passengers. Eight fire officers in two tenders responded to the accident and used the jaws of life to remove <coughs> the occupants of both vehicles. Two ambulances took the injured to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Police temporarily closed the road and asked the public to avoid the area as they continue to carry out their investigations. We'll have more news just after the break. Well, 20 more Barbadians are now certified in food and beverage operations. This after the first batch of students graduated from the Caribbean Cuisine Culinary Institute last evening at the Dining Club at Newton in Christchurch. Chef Peter E.D. says while there are many other training programs on the island, he believes that the Caribbean Cuisine Culinary Institute is a cut above the others and the graduates there are on their way to achieving professional international certification. He is also of the view that the certification is needed in Barbados. These are actually targeted and professional classes. We have affiliated ourselves with places like the American Culinary Federation, who provides certification. We've also joined ourselves with the World Association of Chefs and Cooks, WAX organization. And we have included here in our team two very distinguished certified executive chefs, culinary educators, and one is also a member of the American Academy of Chefs. Now that's the elite of the organization. That's what we all aspire to. And one of the Institute's instructors, Executive Chef Anton Doss, told the graduates that now they've made the decision to be chefs, they must understand that they have chosen to do work for the well-being of others. He adds that knowing that everything they prepare goes into someone's mouth must be taken seriously. Use your safety standards. Be creative. A painting is translated by the painter to see by the public. Each of us, when we look at a painting, we see something different. Yes, there may be a house, but there's maybe things that we don't see. Your food should be exactly that. You should be experimenting. You should be creating, you should be making the public happy, you should make your employer a lot of money. Well, InterRai, a Canadian-based research group which promotes health assessments, has found a partner in Barbados as it has its eyes set on creating a presence on the island. Professor John Herdes of the School of Public Health and Health Systems at the University of Waterloo in Canada says its programs can work here in Barbados. We developed comprehensive assessment and screening systems for health and social services. So today we're going to be talking about mental health services, but we also do research in the area of aging, care of persons with disabilities, and care of children. So we developed these assessments to identify the strengths and preferences and needs of vulnerable populations like persons with mental illness. And we can use these assessment methodologies to develop care plans, track outcomes of care, improve the quality of care, and improve funding methodologies for health and social services. 
Well, Professor Herdiz was speaking to CBC News at a health assessment and technology seminar hosted by Interi and the University of Waterloo. He says Barbados's education system, along with the quality of health care, makes our island an ideal location. When we get started with the use of our systems, individual agencies may do pilot studies to try it out, see how well it works with the patients uh, that they serve, and that provides um, uh, an initial basis of, of evidence to take a look at. Those pilot studies often then expand, and eventually the interest grows enough that government can say, okay, we'd like to adopt this uh, on a large-scale basis. So in my country, uh, every province and territory in Canada right now is using one of our instruments either on a pilot basis or mandated. Uh, so over three million Canadians have been assessed with inter-eye instruments in, in the last several years. Well, the sports news is up next with Anne-Marie Burke.